Welcome, everyone. Isn't it good to be here? Good to be doing something together. But this isn't just any old gathering. Beckett and Audrey, you guys are getting married. So I sat down with Beckett and Audrey and we chatted. I asked them awkward questions. Audrey's first memory of Beckett. Driving to the airport with Beckett's brother Cooper and Cooper saying, Cooper saying to Audrey, hey, I have a brother who's going to Patrick Henry. Um, you should really come here too. So Cooper, I, I would take some solid, solid credit for, for this if, if I were you. So what would any girl in their right mind do uh, at that moment? Look him up on Instagram, of course. <laughs> and Audrey's assessment? Oh, he's cute. And from that moment on, Beckett became known by Audrey's friends in California as her PHC boyfriend. They just hadn't met yet. But they did meet at PHC orientation day. They actually sat down together for lunch with Beckett's mom and some friends. Kim, you remember that? Yeah. Beckett actually has no memory of that <laughs> happening. It's okay, man, it, it turned out fine, so. Beckett's first memory of Audrey. In true PHC form, a walk to Harris Teeter grocery store, of course. That's many a couple's first date at Patrick Henry. Beckett was sick with a cold and Audrey recommended that he come with her friends and get some cold medicine. And they walked and talked together there and back they got some cold medicine, Beckett never took it. <laughs> and from there, they just happened to end up together as moot court partners at college. And the rest is history. Just happened to, right? We know God had something to do with that. So from there, Audrey told me about being invited to Beckett's house a few months later at Thanksgiving. And she watched how Beckett was with his siblings, how he helped out in the kitchen, how he treated his mom. She realized this is the kind of man I could see committing my life to. 
Beckett remembers thanks that Thanksgiving too, and it didn't take long for him to realize why. This was the woman who was a fit for him at the deepest levels. Beckett told me how he was aware of his own deficiencies and how Audrey seemed to fill those in, particularly her genuine caring for others, every person, all the time. Audrey completed what he was lacking. This is a couple who prayed together for God's timing and consistently heard the same thing. Even when that was God telling them to be patient. This is a couple who remembers their first date, their first choice to be together as driving back and forth to worship nights. How cool is that? This is a couple who stands before us today seeing this as the next step in their forever journey with God. They'll tell you this is not about them. This is about the kingdom of Jesus Christ and bringing glory to him. You want to know what love is? Here it is. 1 John 4.10 This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us. He gave himself. John 15 says, There is no greater love than to lay down your life for someone else. In the words of uh, one of the great writers and philosophers of our time, Albert Green, Ooh, baby, let's, let's stay together. <laughs> Loving you, weather, weather. Everybody, times are good or bad. See, they know the writings of Al Green. That's what Al is saying. That's what Al is saying. Love is a decision, good or bad, happy or sad. Doesn't depend on your feelings. It's your identity. It's the way that God loves us. The most well-known words in all the Bible talk about the greatest kind of love. John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his son, his one and only son. God loved the world so much that he gave. Let's pray. Father, on this beautiful day, in this beautiful place, with these beautiful people, we celebrate and affirm a most beautiful thing, a love that gives, a love that puts another before itself, a love that lays everything down, a love that reflects the greatest love there ever was, the love that you have for us, the love you poured out on us in the person of Jesus, your son. Father, we pray every blessing on Audrey and Beckett. We pray for joy. We pray for peace. We pray for faith. We pray for courage. We pray for strength. And we pray for them to be covered by your all-sufficient grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Beckett and Audrey have written their own vows, unique and personal to them, and it's our privilege to now witness their covenant to each other. Audrey Miller, I promise that except for Christ, no one, not even myself, will come before you in my life. I vow to always be your husband first, to walk humbly each day with you, recognizing the great gift that the Lord has given in me, given to me and you. I promise to always be on your side, no matter how I feel in a moment, and no matter how difficult our lives may get. I promise to always look to Christ first, 
never trying to take his place in your life. All but always seeking to be a conduit for his infinite love for you. But most of all, I promise to lead you as best as I can. I promise to love you with everything I have. That's it. <laughs> Beckett, right now as we stand before God and our friends and family, I commit myself to you. Though our future is unknown to us, I'm excited to walk through it with you. I promise to celebrate with you in the good times and persevere with you in the bad times. I promise to be your biggest supporter. I promise to never stop pushing you closer to the man God has made you to be. I promise to encourage you, to honor you, and to respect you. I promise to trust you. I promise to be honest with you. I promise, no matter the circumstances, to choose grace, to choose love, to choose you. Beckett, with this ring, you are giving yourself to Audrey today. You're stepping up, taking on one of the most important assignments a man will ever be given. You're offering your heart and your strength to Audrey without condition for the rest of your days. Nothing you ever do will cost so much, take more work, or be richer and more wonderful. You will discover that because of your strength and sacrifice, Audrey can become the woman she was meant to be. Your love will free her heart and release even more of her beauty. And that is worth whatever the cost. Audrey, with this ring, you also are giving all of yourself to Beckett. It might seem easy on the surface, but nothing requires more courage than for a woman to truly offer her heart and her beauty to a man. But it's so worth it when you see that because of your beauty and sacrifice that Beckett can become the man that he was meant to be. Your love will free his heart and build his strength and that is worth whatever the cost. Let's pray. Jesus, this is exactly what this day is all about. Your covenant love for us, giving yourself up for us in the way that Beckett and Audrey are giving themselves to each other. Washing us clean by your blood that we might stand before you in all the beauty and splendor of a bride on her wedding day. We thank you for loving us like that, Jesus. And we give you all the glory in your precious name. Amen. There's not much left to do. In a moment, the celebration will begin and Audrey and Beckett are looking forward to celebrating with you, with us all. But first, Beckett and Audrey, this is what you want because this is what your Father in Heaven wants, right? You have made a covenant with each other before all these people and you have sealed that promise with these rings. And so by the power vested in me and the laws of the state of California, I pronounce you husband and wife. Beckett, please kiss your bride. Ladies and gentlemen, it is uh, my privilege, it's my privilege to introduce to you for the first time ever, Mr. and Mrs. Beckett Milhouse.
Audrey was always a uh, very serious, stoic little girl. Uh, even as a three-year-old, sometimes it was difficult to get her to smile for the camera. Um, she's not the kind of person that wears her heart on her sleeve. Um, but inside, she has a caring, generous um, heart. I've seen her sing and dance on large stages and cross-examine witnesses in the, in the courtroom. And, um, but when she came home from college and she worked for me in my office for a little bit um, and worked with my clients, um, that's when I realized that she, was, uh, she had become such a, a smart young lady. Um, it was around that time that she was telling us about this kid Beckett. And um, we were having coffee once and uh, I had heard that he had given her this gift, which included all these little items in it. Um, and it was everything that she was all about. And I thought, wow, what a thoughtful gift. And she'd really figured her out. He'd really figured her out. See, this is my first time doing this sort of thing. <laughs> um, he cracked the code, basically. Um, so he went back to school. Um, they both did. And... Um, um, wow, this is difficult, isn't it? Um, so anyway, long story short, I get a call from Beckett. Mr. Miller, I'm really serious about dating your daughter. I said, okay. He sounded about 35. <laughs> Well-spoken, smart. And I don't know what I was thinking, probably how I'm thinking right now. It was really early in the morning and I was at my office. And I said, oh, that sounds good. <laughs> Do you have a ring yet? That was too soon. We weren't at that stage yet. But um, he came out and visited us over uh, the Christmas break. Um, and uh, what a great time we had. Uh, it was really good to get to know you at that moment. And Beckett is a strong, confident, uh, respectful, motivated individual. Um, and as parents, you pray for your kids to meet the right, right person. And I really feel like you're an answer to prayer. But don't let that get to your head. So he met with uh, Christy and I and um, asked for, um, told us of his intention to marry Audrey. Um, and this wasn't just a lovesick kid. The guy came with a plan, you know, and even a savings account, which is like, wow, where'd this guy come from? <laughs> Spreadsheets, yes, thank you. He cracked my code. <laughs> uh, boy, tough crowd. Um, so then he planned the proposal. This was amazing. He, he enrolled uh, Francine and Reagan to meet. He had the ring shipped first, which is pretty amazing. Um, he proposed to her on the beach precisely at sunset. Like, what a planner, you know? <laughs> that was our moment of truth, because at that moment, we had to figure out how to plan this wedding over six months um, in the middle of a pandemic, which was interesting. And I want to thank the Millhouses a.k.a. the Waltons, for allowing Audrey to stay at your house. And that's where we heard a lot of great stories about Beckett's parents, Paul and Kim. Um, I had a lot of great conversations with Paul, um, one specifically when Audrey crashed their car. <laughs> I had to do it. <laughs> but she already had the ring at that point. But by the grace of God, some determination and technology, we're all here tonight. And so I want to say to Audrey and Beckett, as my parents would tell me, keep God first. Everything else will work itself out. So let's raise our glass to Audrey and Beckett. May God bless this marriage. All right. Thank you, Baron. And I'm, before I pray, I just wanted to say a quick thank you to all the California people 
you have made us feel like we belong here and um we you know we just only known some of you for three days so thank you for that um let's go to the lord and ask his blessing on our meal tonight jesus thank you for this meal thank you for this entire event um you are lord of all and you sovereignly through so many different ways you brought these two together and we're grateful to watch what you're doing we ask your blessing over their marriage we ask your blessing over this meal all the conversations that happen all the new relationships that form may you be glorified by all of it we pray this in jesus name amen when i first met audrey i didn't understand what the big deal was she was just laying there she couldn't even walk. She just laying there in a plastic box wearing a hospital uh, gown. Uh, but I decided to give her a chance. After all, I was only two months old. So what did I know? Our moms kept laying us next to each other. And at first, we just gave each other the silent treatment. But then one day, I decided I wanted to eat her. And <laughs> I grabbed her arm and went for a bite, but my mom quickly pulled me away. <laughs> and since then, I knew that I loved her and she's always been my number one. We've had matching outfits, toys, Halloween costumes, brothers, vacations, education, hairstyles, and hobbies. <laughs> when we were eight years old, we made a deal. We were gonna be each other's maid of honor. We would text each other randomly to make sure that the deal was still on. And it was. <laughs> As teenagers, we got involved in different activities, but she's always been my number one. There were two moments in getting to meet and know Beckett in which I knew he was the one for Audrey. The first, I was visiting Audrey and it was midterms. Everyone was getting insane with tests and studying. So Beckett offered, me, offered to take me back to the airport. So he asked me what time and I said 1.30 a.m. And instead of bowing out gracefully for this wonderful opportunity, he was there awake before me, ready and willing. The second story, on this same trip, I asked Audrey what Enneagram type Beckett is. And for those of you who don't know, it's a personality test. And she said, Beckett's a three. And I asked what that was. And she said, well, they're basically perfect. <laughs> Now Audrey has a new number one, and I have one regret. I should have eaten her so that she, should get, so that she could stay with me forever. But really, I know I'm not losing Audrey. I'm gaining a new best friend in Beckett. I can't wait for the next season of our lives where the three of us can wear matching outfits. So I'd like to raise a toast to Audrey and Beckett, my two number ones. Hello, everyone. Thank you all for coming. Hi, Dr. Chad. <laughs> um, as most of you know, I'm Audrey's little sister, Franny. Um, I'd first just like to say congratulations to Audrey and Beckett. I am very, very happy and excited for you, and I love you both so much. Beckett, welcome to the family. <laughs> Growing up with Audrey, I feel that we were always on different stages of life, so we never had a really close relationship when we were younger. But I have come to realize that Audrey is one of the biggest inspirations and supporters in my life. Ever since we were little, I have always looked up to you. Your kindness, generosity, and connection with God inspires me every day. Growing up with Audrey, we have shared many, many memories. <laughs> when we were younger, we would always watch many, many hours of Disney movies, um, drive to Sacramento and San Francisco together with our grandparents, and we would dress in their clothes. <laughs> I think my favorite memory with Audrey happened pretty recently. Last year, I visited Audrey at Patrick Henry College for the weekend, and we wanted to have a nice dinner with the two of us. But then we realized we were both broke, and we couldn't really make much food in Audrey's dorm room. <laughs> so we went to the nearest grocery store and bought two little chicken pot pies, but instead of chicken, it was actually mac and cheese. And, and we heated it up in our microwave and watched the proposal. <laughs> um, that's just a little memory of Audrey and I. Um, Beckett, Bucket, Brisket, or Corey. 
<laughs> you are such a genuine and thoughtful, funny, amazing person. I'm so, so, so happy you guys found each other. My favorite memory with Beckett <laughs> is kicking his butt in asphalt eight. <laughs> I let him win a couple of times. <laughs> Last summer, Audrey and I were at my grandparents' house watching my mom's wedding. And this is when Audrey had the biggest crush on Beckett. She would not stop talking about him. <laughs> but now I understand why she was talking about him so much. Because Beckett, you bring this light into every room. But fast forward a year, and now we are celebrating your wedding. My family and I love you too so, so, so much, and we're really happy that you chose Audrey. I'm so excited to see where God takes you both. You two are perfect for each other. So let's cheers to Audrey. Forgot my drink. <laughs> so for those of you who don't know me, I'm Ethan. Um, I'm mostly, hey, hi, Nora. <laughs> I'm mostly here to tell you a little bit more about the stories Mark mentioned in his message, um, but from the vantage point of Beckett's former roommate. Um, so as I got to know my roommate during freshman orientation, I was really scared. Um, I couldn't have imagined two more different people sharing a room, taking classes, and doing life together, and I certainly never could have imagined being the man he asked to stand with him on the most important day of his life. I'm struck by how close we became, and this speech should show why. Because when I sat down to write out my thoughts, which was a couple weeks ago, not this morning, <laughs> I knew I was in trouble because Beckett is always the guy I go to for help with something like this. I'd say, hey, I'm supposed to write a speech for a guy that I know, but I'm afraid that I won't be able to capture what needs to be said. And you know I'm bad at these things, can you help me out? I would say, I met this guy a couple years ago, and I couldn't have imagined he'd become one of my closest friends. <laughs> I had no idea that I would wake up to find him at his desk, Bible open, and Audrey's photo in front of him, bent over in some of the deepest prayer that I've ever heard. <laughs> I had no idea that I would be the guy happily staying up till 3 a.m., talking through why she was the girl, <laughs> and why he couldn't let her go. I definitely had no idea I'd be one of the people he practiced asking out before he went to meet Audrey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't, no. <laughs> Those were happy days, Beckett, but now here you are and I couldn't be happier for you and I have a few final things to say. But we'll get to those because first it turns out that I, his roommate, was one of the last people to realize that Beckett was interested in Audrey. It went something like this. Becky got a new moot court partner one semester, and I noticed how he kept staying out later and later working on the case. He would give me the following lines. We just have to look over the notes a little bit more. Yeah, man, we have to be extra prepared for the case. It's a tough one. My personal favorite. We didn't respond well to the big classroom style instruction and find that one-on-one -on -one practice is better. <laughs> to which I remember thinking something of, to the effect of, he really should get a new partner. <laughs> she seems like she needs a lot of help. He's never around anymore. Well, he finally made his move, and I remember checking up with him one night last October, and uh, he and Audrey, I think, were celebrating their fourth or fifth month anniversary. And in his response to my casual, hey, how are you and Audrey doing? He shot back, pretty good. I'm gonna go get the ring this weekend. And I have to say there were a lot of reactions that ran through my head, um, but none of them were surprise or caution. It really seemed like the most natural thing in the world to me. I had seen Audrey take the best parts of Beckett and make them better. I saw her lock arms with him and walk with him through life as his best friend, a confidant, and a reflection of Christ's unconditional love. In short, I watched Audrey drive Beckett to be a more mature, humble, compassionate, and eternally minded man of God. <laughs> and it's my absolute pleasure to stand up here and tell him that I'm proud of him. In response to Audrey's influence on his life, I was able to watch Beckett grapple with understanding what Christ acquired from him as a husband months before they started dating. I watched him wait patiently on the Lord with contentment, strengthening his relationship with Christ and 
his first love. All the time keeping an eye on that girl that he couldn't let go. So Beckett, on behalf of your family and on behalf of your brothers in the wing, keep that first love at the center of your life, your home, and your future. I love you, man. And let's toast to the bride, to the groom, to their commitment to Christ, their first love, and his reflection of unconditional love in their lives. Never a river ever run so deep is the love I have for you. The love I have for you. Never a song be sung the way I feel with the love I have for you. The love I have for you. Truth be told, I've never felt this way. Darling, no, I might make mistakes, but I'm willing to love you for the rest of my days. If you're willing to trust me, darling, don't be afraid. To have and to hold And never let go And we'll be old and gray But in love, 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 love You and I always I thought I knew true love before you then I realized in time what I was waiting to find. I could stand on my own, but I'd rather stand with you with a promise and a vow for the rest of my life. We'll be always you. It 